As you know, foldable phones have been around for a while now, and I'm not talking about that flip phone from the early 2000s. I'm talking about smartphones with a foldable display. And the latest one, this one right here, to hit the market is the Motorola Razr Plus. The phone's been on sale for just about a month now, but I didn't want to rush out my review just because I wanted to give you a more balanced perspective of what the user experience of this device truly is. I'm Nick Gray, and this is my Motorola Razr Plus 30-day review. If you've been following the foldable smartphone space, you know that this isn't the first foldable from Motorola. The company brought back its Razer brand back in 2019 for its foldable lineup and has had a couple iterations of this device over the last couple years. The main concept with the clamshell form factor has remained the same, but Motorola has made one big change that's dramatically improved the user experience of this phone this year. Say hello to the Razer Pluses cover display. And if it looks big, that's because it is. Rather than using a tiny display like Samsung or Oppo on the outside of their phone, Motorola's gone all out with a massive 3.6 inch panel. And I know I talk about specs and how they really don't matter most of the time, but having a larger display on the outside of the phone makes a massive difference when the competition has been using screens that are so small that you can actually barely just read one notification at a time. On previous Motorola foldables, the cover screen has always been a little bit more customizable than what Samsung and other brands have offered. But on this phone, they've taken things to a whole new level, not just because of the size that you get here, but what you can actually do with it. You have a fully customizable home screen panel here with app shortcuts, widgets, and other features that are built specifically for the home screen. But then you can just go ahead and add any Android widget from any app, just as you would on the inside display of the phone. And then Motorola went and added games as well, something that on one hand is completely useless, but on the other, I think is a pure stroke of genius. Personally, I waste about an hour a day on smartphone games just to pass the time. And even though the games here that are pre-installed are incredibly simple, they're also pretty addictive. Pulling the Razer Plus out of your pocket and playing a game on the cover display while the phone is still closed definitely gets quite a bit of attention since it's something that most people aren't used to seeing. My personal favorites are Stack Bounce and Marble Mayhem, but if none of the games that Motorola has pre-installed on this device are up your alley, that's perfectly fine because you can literally play any game that you want on the cover display. Casual games like Dino T-Rex, Crossy Roads, or Angry Birds will definitely work best, but if you wanna play Call of Duty Mobile, you can definitely do that too. But this is where the Razer Plus truly shines. Not necessarily because you can play games on the cover display all day long, but because there's no real limitation to what you can do with it. If you wanna browse the web, you can do that. Check Twitter, catch up on Instagram, get directions with Google Maps, watch a YouTube video, or just keep up with your team's score while the game is on. It's all possible. And you can even use the full keyboard on the cover display to reply to a quick message or type out a full email rather than just being limited to a handful of pre-canned replies as you are on other foldable devices. And Motorola's even thought out and come really close to perfecting the transition from one screen to the other. If you're using an app on the cover display right here as I have with Google Maps, simply open the phone and it's transitioned seamlessly to the internal display. But if you wanna close the phone again, you get the option right here to continue, tap the button, and you can use the display again on the outside of the phone, transitioning from the inside to the outside seamlessly. And having used a half dozen flip style foldable phones over the last couple years, I have to say this is the first time that it feels like there's a true cohesive user experience that's truly intuitive. That being said though, this phone isn't quite perfect, just like any other phone. In terms of hardware design, there's really not a lot of character with this phone since Motorola dropped that chin that was a prominent design element on its last few foldables to make room for that larger cover display on the outside. The result is a pretty generic looking device. Personally, I do love the glacier blue colorware here the best, but if you truly want a Razer Plus that stands out, the Viva Magenta, which is Pantone's color of the year, is sure to grab people's attention. As for the foldable display and its hinge, I really don't have any complaints here. There's no gap between the two edges thanks to the teardrop hinge design, which makes this phone a mere 15.1 millimeters thick compared to the much thicker 15.9 millimeters that you get on the Samsung. And that's not even counting the gap section, which makes it even thicker. 
Motorola is using Gorilla Glass Victus on the cover display on the front and the frosted glass panel on the back of my device here with an aluminum frame all the way around. That does offer some pretty decent protection, but there are plenty of cases and skins for this device, which I'm going to link in the video description below if you want to give your phone just a slightly different look. When it comes to performance, you're not going to be getting the latest and greatest chipset here since Motorola did want to keep this phone fairly cheap, coming in at $999. Instead, you get last year's Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, which I think is the perfect balance of performance and efficiency since the thin body of the phone only allows for a 3,800 milliamp hour battery. Now, you might think that such a small battery would mean limited runtime for the smartphone, but benchmark numbers actually show that Motorola may have underclocked the performance just a little bit just to ensure that the phone delivers full day battery life on a full charge. In our standardized battery test, the phone lasted 12 hours and 30 minutes, coming up just about 30 minutes shy of what the Galaxy S23 Ultra delivered with its much larger battery. In the real world, the phone should last you even longer than that because probably like me, you'll be using the cover display quite a bit simply because of how good it is. I honestly found that I was only using or opening the phone up about 60 to 70% of the time. And it would be nice if Motorola gave you some statistics as to how much you're using the cover display on the outside versus the one on the inside. When it comes to charging, there is no charger in the box, but the phone does support 30 watt wired charging, which goes from zero to 100% in about an hour and 20 minutes. But then there's five watt wireless charging as well, which is incredibly slow, but it's nice feature to have, especially on a foldable device like this. The internal display is 6.9 inches, and it's definitely the largest within this category. And it also has a 165 hertz refresh rate and definitely looks really good for watching content or playing games. The eight gigabytes of RAM is definitely good enough for most people as well, but it would have been nice to have a 12 gigabyte options for someone who wants to spec things out. But thankfully, you do get 256 gigabytes of storage on this base model. Thanks to the phone's form factor, the Razer Plus, like a couple other foldables, has a unique advantage when it comes to its cameras. With the main and ultra wide cameras positioned right next to that cover display, you can use them to capture some incredible high quality selfies of you or you and your friends and record video of yourself as well. Since the phone folds in half, it also acts as its own stand, making it extremely versatile as a camera phone. The only issue here is that Motorola still struggles to compete with the competition when it comes to image and video quality. The main camera that Motorola is using is a 12 megapixel sensor, which works decently well, even in low light conditions. The problem is though that Motorola's post-processing of its images leaves them just a little bit dull. Compare the shots to most other smartphones in the $1,000 range, and you'll likely choose the images from the other device. And while having a 12 megapixel sensor on that main camera does allow it to perform a little bit better than most other devices in low light conditions, it also means that there's no 2X digital zoom option here, since Motorola wasn't willing to give users six megapixel stills. On top of that, the 13 megapixel ultra wide camera really isn't that wide with only a 108 degree field of view compared to the Galaxy Z Flip 4 ultra wide camera that has 124 degrees. And then that main camera on the back of the phone also struggles with jittery image stabilization, especially in low light conditions. In an alternate universe though, this could have been the ultimate vlogging smartphone. The design with its massive cover display that allows you to use those rear cameras is nearly perfect. But maybe next year we'll get the camera upgrades that you need, especially things like being able to switch on the fly between the main camera and ultra wide cameras while recording video. It's the simple things that leave us a little bit wanting on this device. That being said, Motorola does deserve some credit for delivering a pretty decent selfie camera on the inside of the phone. The 32 megapixel sensor can take some great shots. And on top of that, they've also added 4K video recording at 60 frames per second, even though on a phone like this, when you have that main camera on the back of the phone that can capture 4K video, it's really not that needed. Once you factor in all the strengths and weaknesses of this smartphone, I do think that the Razer Plus is one of the best foldable smartphones yet. That being said, it's far from being perfect, especially when it comes to its cameras. And I hope Motorola does address that with next year's models. But overall, it's a well-balanced device and delivers a much better user experience when compared to other foldable or flip style smartphones that are currently on the market. That being said, the Galaxy Z Flip is right around the corner and it's hard to say whether the Razer Plus will be able to maintain its lead. Let me know what you guys think of the Razer Plus in the comments below and whether or not you're gonna be spending your money on a foldable this year. Thank you guys so much for watching. 
and I'll catch you in the next one.